Hi, this is Hannah at Seattle Findings, and today we're going to be talking about our economy rolling mill. Our most watched video on YouTube is a video of taking apart the rolling mill and putting it back together to change the rollers, and we realize how important that video can be to people that just bought an economy rolling mill, because it can be a little bit intimidating uh, to change the rollers for the first time, but it's a little old, and we thought we'd uh, expand on it and offer a little bit more information. We're not going to go too much into... Uh, you know, using the rolling milks. We're, I'm just not set up to do that right now. Um, but we're going to talk about rollers a bit. Here's a selection of some of the rollers we carry. We've got, you know, pattern wire, half round wire, uh, full round wire. We've got combo rollers and some uh, patterned flat rollers. And I'm going to leave a link in the description below where you can find some of the rollers that we carry. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take the T-bar out of the top of the rolling mill and then you're going to unscrew the bolts that hold the top plate down so that you can lift the top plate off. By the way, for a list of parts of the rolling mill, you can find them in the instructional PDF on our website. I'll put a link in the description below. Once you've got those bolts undone and you take the top plate off, you should be able to slide the top roller out of the rolling mill. Sometimes things can be a little bit stuck. I would recommend keeping some WD-40 on hand and just be ready to sort of like tap things with your wrench a bit if they're just not, not coming out the way they're supposed to. So don't misplace these little springs in here. Depending on when and where you bought your rolling mill, you might have two or you might have four, but the thing doesn't function without them, so don't let them roll away. So once you've got that top roller out, you should be able to slide the bushings off of it. One of them comes off freely and the other one is held on by a gear and a washer and a bolt. So you're gonna need to take that bolt out. This is another thing that gets stuck sometimes. I had to use WD-40 and tap on it a bit to get it to loosen. Um, so yeah, just be a little patient with it. Once you get that off, you will see that there's this little piece of key stock that keeps the gear in place. Um, I'm going to try to show you how that fits on there, but my hand gets in the way. Sorry about that. It's kind of hard to see what's going on here. Um, but yeah, so that's what makes the gear move. So make sure you don't lose that little block of metal. So now you can slide this last bushing off. We're going to change from the combo roller over to the wire roller. So first we're just going to slide the bushings onto the new roller. And then we can put the key stock in, slide the gear on, align the slot with the key stock and then put the washer and the bolt back on. So we're just gonna reassemble it the same way we disassembled the other one. All right, so now we're uh, onto the bottom roller. Depending on what you're doing, you might not need to do this part. A lot of the like pattern rollers, for example, you use a plain flat roller on the bottom and you use the pattern roller on top. Um, in this case, since we're switching to a pair of wire rollers, we have to change both of them out. So usually the easiest way to do this is to start by taking the large gear off the side. As you can see, I struggle a little bit to get it off. It takes some uh, wiggling and tapping and stuff to get it loose. Again, don't misplace the key stock. And then you can slide that bottom roller out, which is also a little bit stuck, of course. Um, at this point, we can move over the bushings to the other roller, which is gonna go pretty much the exact same way it did for the top roller. This roller looks a little bit different because it's a little bit longer on one side. Um, this is just has to go through that gear on the side that the top roller doesn't. But yeah, it's the same process. At this point, if you've set down your roller, you might be a little bit confused about which side is which, because on the bottom roller, they do look a little bit similar. So the best way to figure that out as you're trying to reassemble it is to just compare it with the top roller. All of the rollers will have the same size right side, but the bottom rollers will have a longer left side to go through that big gear. So anyway, just uh, make sure everything's facing the right way before you start to reassemble it, otherwise stuff is just not going to fit together right. So we're going to put the key stock and the gear and the washer and the bolt back on this roller just like you did in the other one and then we'll be ready to slide them onto the mill before we put the big gear back on the side. So at this point, before we slide it on the mill, we want to take a look at the bushings. So the bushings have these little divots in them and that's where your springs are going to go. So you need those facing each other. The divots are going to face inward. So on the bottom roller, they're going to face up. On the top roller, they're going to face down. All right, so this is what they look like when they're properly aligned. This is how they're going to slide onto the rolling mill. So we're ready to do that. We can go ahead and slide the bottom one on 
and we're gonna speed up here because we're basically just doing the same thing we did when we took it apart just in the reverse order to put it back together so you're gonna slide the big gear back onto the side and I found it easier to put the gear on and then put the key stock in place but just make sure that's there or else your rollers won't turn Okay, once you've got that bolted on, you're ready to put the springs in. So you're just going to set the springs down in the divots of the bushings of the bottom roller, just like this. And then when you slide the top roller on, you're going to want the divots in the top roller facing down so that the springs go into them. After that, you can put the top plate back on and put the bolts back in the top plate. After that, you're going to want to tighten the two gears on the top down all the way so that your rollers are aligned before you put the T-bar in, and then you can use the T-bar to raise and lower your rollers evenly. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, feel free to like and follow. If you have any questions or concerns, uh, leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you. I hope you have a good day.